I want to give my state of the program for Baylor women's basketball since the 2023-2024 season has been completed. It's because Baylor just lost to 1C USC 74-70. They were down by 10 I mean, at one point in the game. And they caught fought back guy within six at halftime. And in fact, Baylor at uh, Baylor scored 26 points in the third quarter, but the problem is they only made 13 and four points in the fourth quarter, and USC scored 21. Yeah, so 37 for points for USC, 39 for Baylor. So yeah, Baylor did outscore them, but it's because of that third quarter. They just couldn't make enough shots in the fourth quarter, to be honest. And yes, in the first half, it was not that good shooting. And you could say whatever you want about the officials. And I know it, some fans are complaining about that. And I would be with them. But at the same time, it was questionable on both sides. I mean, and you can't really blame them on that. The two times that the ball went out of bounds and they, they kept it with USC ball. It's not clear and it defended it. And I get some of the fouls were ticky tack or next to nothing. But we literally held Juju Watkins. Yes, she got above her average with 30 points. But that's on 28 shots. Eight of those were makes. And two for 11 on threes. But here's the kicker. 12 for 13 on, on free throws. And I will also say USC had a lot of hype. I mean... Four starters out of five above six feet tall. Yeah, that could be a problem, but... And we even outscored them off the bench. I mean, USC only had four bench points, and we had nine plus three. That's 12 plus two. That's 14 points, and and all this. And USC had three doubles. Just scores a combined 4K. 30 plus 11. That's 41 plus 14. That's 55 points. So really, without Juju Watkins, USC is horrible. Or not as good, so to speak. I'm just telling the truth. Then Baylor had three those good scores. Okay, 17 plus 15, that's 32, plus 12, that's 44 points right there. And it's not including one of the players with nine points. And USC did have like two other players that combined for 15 points and plus eight. And USC did shoot the ball slightly better than Baylor in this game, 39.4%. From the field on 66 attempts, 29.4% on threes on 17 attempts. And there's one thing that USC did better than Baylor in this game is free throws. I mean, 81%, but they had 21 free throws. And you got to take into consideration, Juju Watkins had 13 of those. 41 rebounds, 9 of those offensive, 11 assists, 2 steals, 7 blocks, 9 turners, 11 fouls. And yeah, Baylor had 20 fouls, and that's kind of a big difference. And Baylor didn't shoot the ball good in this game. 38.6% from the field on 70 attempts. 34.6% on threes on 26 attempts. So we did our job on defense and we made some threes. And yes, we were 58.3% on free throws, but that's on 12 attempts. I can't say without, uh, without denying it. Make all free throws, you win the game. However, it is not realistic to make every single free throw. Though the misses, like Sarah Andrews, good free throw shooter, missed them both. Jay Walker usually is good at free throws. She missed one. I mean, that's the thing. I can't say make all your free throws, you win the game. Because we need to make more shots. We need to make get some more stops on defense. We have 44 rebounds, 12 of those offensive, so we out-rebounded USC in this game. 17 assists, which is better than USC. Five steals, which is better than USC, but we only have four blocks, and USC had seven, and four of those were Juju Watkins. And she's going to be a problem for the next three years until she turns 21 at least. If she could turn 21, she's going to, once she gets to 21 years old, she could go to the WNBA draft. If not, she's going to stick around for three more years. And I'm just being truthful, and Baylor only had 10 turnovers, and USC only had nine. So... Maybe we could have forced more turnovers in this game. Possibly. And I apologize for looking down there because I cannot memorize all this stuff. And there's no use for me to go over like the 
last minute of the game. So, but I will say the points on turners actually were even eight to eight. The fast break points actually favored Baylor thirteen to seven. But points in the paint favor USC thirty four twenty. That's one of those areas when Baylor loses the game, they get dominated in the paint, and that's what happened. And Baylor missed a lot of layups. And you guys can't take in consideration the height for USC, but at the same time, when they're good looks or even like a a paint mid range jump shot, you gotta make that if there's no contest. And I know it's gotta be heartbreaking for Dre Edwards to finish her career with the Sweet 16. And same thing goes for Asia Blackwell and Cameron Forever. However, none of those players went to a Sweet 16 before. And we don't know about Madison Bartley. She's the only player that has not made an announcement on coming back for another year of eligibility. She's the only only one. Because Sarah Andrews did it. Jan Van Gynbe did it. So we're going to bring back those two no matter what. And this is potentially bringing him back seven additional players as well. I know that Danae Fritz has not played a lot this year, but and this is also a pending transfer portal, too, by the way. I mean, Danae Fritz, yeah, that would be helpful. Bell and War, she's going to be a junior next year. This experience for these players that are returning will help them. And Yaya Felder, I mean, she's never been to a Sweet 16, let alone an NCAA tournament. I don't think she even made one in her freshman year. I definitely know last year she didn't. So... She definitely gets game. She got some experience in it and from this. I mean, and Lady Fescantel, of course, she didn't play, but now she's part of the teams that didn't. And like I said, Max and Barley, you know, it that is if she is coming back. And I don't know, Kyle Abraham, yeah, but she hasn't played since November, and who knows what I what it is. I think it's like a med- medical red shirt or something. And I definitely know for a fact that Baylor has. Two freshmen coming in next year that signed their layer intention. And as Gore, like their last name is like G O R something. I definitely know the other player is Ka- Kayla Nelms, a six foot one inch forward. Or oh, Goryana Nova. G-O-R-Y-A-N-O-V-A. That's the player I'm referring to, by the way. And obviously, we're going to attack the transfer portal. I think what we really need is a post player that's six foot two or taller, even six foot or six foot three and taller. That could start. But it, that's, it, it, that is even if Madison Bartley comes back next year. We need somebody down low to give a little more, more height in the middle. I mean, we do. And that's the truth about it is. And I know there's plenty of good options in a transfer portal that average like double-double at six foot two or even taller. So I'm not worried about them. And somebody even asked me on message board, are we really going after Sailor Poffenberger Barger or some, Sailor from... Like that six foot two inch guard from Arkansas or Asia or that six foot three inch player post player from Kentucky. It, it, do they really think I know the assistant coaches? Of course I don't know if we're going after him or even if we're a target for them. I don't even know. It's just funny that people thought that. I mean, they thought I could tell them we we're going. We are offering and on. And those two players anyway, I couldn't find anything on social media. And I was sure that the coaches have noticed players into the transfer portal. Of course they would know on who's entered or not. But they were more focused on the games first. And I know last year was rough. I mean... I'm just calling the way it is. And injuries. I know Dre Edwards. I mean, the injury to Asia Blackwell hurt us. So. It really did. 
hurt us. But I will say, we are headed in the right direction. This is the first time that Nikki Khan has most of her players recruit that's been that has been sold on Nikki Khan. The only one that hasn't come back and hasn't been at Baylor for more than two years is Sarah Andrews. Because Jane is in her second year. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, Kyrene is the second year. Madison Bartley, first year. Danae Fred's first year. Jada Walker, and the list goes on and on and on. Even Asia Blackwell's second year. Dre Edwards, technically, second year. And we all know that last year, we made it to the round of 32, and we didn't finish as high in the Big 12 as we thought that year. But, like I said, injuries and no Dre Edwards hurt. And thus, Baylor only finished with 20 wins, 13 losses, and 10 and 8 in the Big 12. And we made it to the round of 32 somehow. And that comeback win against Alabama. This year, we improved in both overall wins, conference wins, even Big 12 standings. And I know that's not where we want to be as fifth. I know we're, that's not where we want to be. I know it's not where we want. But we are headed in the right direction. And it, I mean, and, and even NCAA tournament, we are we made it further than probably people would have thought in that crazy one-win game, lose the next game for the next ten games until I mean, at one point in the season. Until we got a long winning streak prior to the Iowa State game in the Big 12 tournament. And just imagine, this team could have been a host site. Or could have been a higher seed than the five. But somehow, they made it to the Sweet 16. And I get Virginia Tech was banged up. But Nikki Collins said, even if she was, I mean, like Virginia Tech did not have Elizabeth Kelly on banged up. That's what I meant. With the torn ACL. But even if she would have played, Nikki Khan felt like they could have won that game. Potentially. So, yeah, we're we're heading in the right direction here as a program. And this should help recruiting by going back to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2021. And the first time for Nikki Collin as a head coach. It's going to help. I have a hunch. It's going to help us. And we are will be locked and loaded next year. This is pending transfer portal. Because I know for a fact that we're going to have to add some add a player in the transfer portal anyway. Maybe even two. And that's probably what we need. And we don't know about Bartley coming back. Madison Bartley coming back or anything. And I know we... But I think next year's team is going to be better. One, look at all the experience coming back potentially. Two, Texas is no longer in the conference. Oklahoma's no longer in the conference. That's going to help because we all know those two teams were at the top two. Kansas State is losing Ayoka Lee. Um, but I will say they do lose other players as well, like Gabby Gregory. but And, of course, some players that enter the transfer portal, but that's normal. That is normal. I'm just telling the truth about it. And Rebecca Dollinger, I think, is a junior. I mean, a senior. I know she's a senior this year. It's a matter of, is she a fifth year? I'm going to double check that. And I know for a fact, okay, it only lists three years. I'm, maybe she has a COVID year. I don't know. Maybe she played JUCO. Then she has I just know for a fact that Colorado next year, that's joining the Big 12, will lose six seniors. They will lose that much. But they will return Vonley. Vonley. In the middle. As a big weapon. I know for a fact that Arizona's lost some players to the portal right now. I know they did. Arizona stays down and down, but maybe they're trying to bring it back up. And I know Arizona made the NCAA tournament this year. I know they did. But we'll see how good they were going to be. Utah's losing Alyssa Peely. 
that's going to be big. And I know they lose two other seniors as well that that were on grad. They walked on senior day on all this. And I just know the Big 12 is more gettable. But I will say that I know that this is all pending transfer portal and all those teams. And I know Utah lost a few players to transfer portal already. I know they did just by trying to keep track with the transfer portal on my own. I know Iowa State returns a lot, but they also, the Duke player from Iowa State into the portal, but she was no longer a starter. And there's a few other players as well, but some of those players are not really that much. I mean, and I know West Virginia, that beat, and we didn't, we didn't even lose to them, but they pushed that Iowa team. They pushed them. And we're going to learn from this. Okay, I definitely know that. I'm going to just look at it real fast. Because I do think West Virginia is going to be a little bit better next year. But it depends on who they bring back and all this, too. Yeah, Black Snake could very well come back for West Virginia. Like a new... I think Nugent didn't play this year because of waiver. I think that's the case. Okay, I know Tyvee Diggs is a fifth-year player. Because I know she was at TCU then went to West Virginia. And I apologize this video is going long here. I just want to to give some context in terms of the Big 12 next year. And this is all pending transfer portal. Because I do think the Big 12 is more winnable next year. And we might win the Big 12 next year potentially with all the returns we have coming back. Okay, Jalen Hemingway. For West Virginia is a fifth year. So yeah, she's done too. But Quinley is back. And it looks like to me, this. the good news is too, that Kansas will not have Tayana Jackson, Ty, Tyena Jackson, that six foot six inch girl anymore. That gave us a problem this year too. I mean, we are not, I already know Oklahoma State lost some players to the portal, but some of them were like old, like mid season, they were gone or nothing burgers. Essentially, and but they even lost Hannah Gusters, the former Baylor player who went to LSU, then went to Oklahoma State. I'm just telling the truth, and, and just imagine. And this team went to Austin, a top five Texas team at that. That's currently in Elite Eight. We we led from start to finish, and I know. That really didn't define anything. I mean, we lost to Kansas pretty bad. We had a few bad games in there like Kansas and BYU. I'm just, that's the two bad losses if there were such thing as bad losses. I know BYU is the worst loss, but BYU was only by 12 points. But still, we should not lose to a team like BYU. But given what went, has went down and we lost, of course, we all know that we lost to Oklahoma this year by 11 points. We also lost to Texas by 12 at home, despite being on the road. I mean, but we got revenge against Kansas. That's what matters, and we beat West Virginia twice. And losing to Iowa State did hurt. It did. And the non -con if you eliminate the Big 12 tournament and the NCAA tournament game, we were undefeated. 14, I mean, undefeated in the non-con. We really were. But then the first loss of the season, as we all know, came to Kansas. And that's our that was a bad loss at the time. But it turned out to be an NCAA tournament team. But still, we don't want to need to be dominated like that. And in every loss this year, it's been the points and the paint difference, the rebounding difference. That's cost Baylor some games this year. And hopefully that gets addressed. And we do need to work on our zone offense a little bit. Because at times the zone offense has been a problem, but I just know, like, 
in that Virginia Tech game, we didn't call as many plays, but the team actually does better, according to Kakan, when they don't call a lot of plays. But still, we do need to improve, obviously. And I would think we're going to be hungry for next year. One, get a better overall record. And two, get a better conference record. Three, potentially going further in the NCAA tournament than just a Sweet 16, like a lead eight or a Final Four. That's all we, and it all depends about matchups as well. And I did say before the season began that a round of 32 was the floor and the ceiling could have been a Final Four, Elite Eight. It landed in between, so I was kind of right. I know if we won that Utah game, and that Utah game was not easy, even though Baylor led a whole way. But that was when Utah was healthy. And obviously, they didn't get healthy. They got, had some injuries along the way that's hurt them a bit this year, and that's why it kind of t- hurt them this year, even though despite all the returners. But if the way and see how good Utah is, I think they're going to be good still, but I don't know how much. Colorado's losing a lot. Like I said, six seniors, but they return Vonley, the best post player. So she's really the best post player we're going to have to deal with next year. Besides Audie Crooks, those two are the biggest problems. That's just top of my head. Because I know Ayoka Lee for Kansas State. I think she's done with eligibility. I, I, it's not that she's done with eligibility. I think she's going to go to the WNBA draft. I think she's declared. And there's not going to be like a team like Texas in a conference again. I mean, like next year, I don't think with multiple players with 6'3 or above, like three of those rotating. So, and we were one of two teams in the Big 12 that made it to the Sweet 16 or further. Everybody else did it. And yet, I know we did lost to BYU. That should not happen. And I would think we're going, and that's probably what we need to improve on is we got to be better on the road. And yes, we lost some home games. So even like Kansas State with that Aoka Lee, we only lost that game by three points. We just couldn't make shots in the second half, period, because it went to that zone. So we got to have to work on that there. Obviously, Kansas was a bad loss. I mean, look at the numbers, but it was the last the worst half of the year by far. Even Iowa State, the next game, we kind of gave that away both not once, but twice, actually. So, if we could work on that there, and the crazy thing is I think Iowa State's going to be better next year. I just don't know how much. I think there could be a Sweet 16 team, but they cannot be in that same spot as what they were a year, this past year, Iowa State, because they were like a ninth, a seventh seed. They have to improve their seeding and they're going to think about making a sweet 16. I know a seven can still beat a 10 or a three could lose to a six, but to make it easier, you got to make yourself at least a five seed. I know a five seed is not like a host site, but a four seed, yes, you got to find a way and they have to what bad losses in. We did lose some unranked games, but I think no matter what, we're, we're definitely going to be ranked in the top 16 in the country. Because we made Sweet 16. I mean, and we did overachieve when compared to the preseason poll a little bit too. And I know we went as high as number six, four in the country, but then kept slipping down to 12 and 13. Then 18, 21, 24, but then... After that loss to Oklahoma, we did not lose from Valentine's Day till March 9th. That with all those games. I mean, when you look at it, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we won the last six out of seven games to go into the NCAA tournament. And thank goodness we didn't go to LSU region. Thank goodness we didn't. Or Oregon State. Or Notre Dame. Unlike 
Charlie Cream, and that guy's been wrong on bracketology on Baylor the last two years. Because he'd said, we're going to be an eight or nine, eight or nine, eight seed last year in 2022, 2023. But ended up as a seven. This year, he thought we we're going to be a six. We were, we were a five. It just goes to show he doesn't know enough and, and he, it's just guess anyway, I know, but you got to take in count all those good wins that Baylor had. Look at all those top 25 wins. I mean, Virginia Tech, if you include that game, that would be a top 25 win right there. We beat West Virginia twice. That's three. We beat Texas once. That's that's four. Even Miami, Florida, that's ranked. That was ranked at the time. That's five. Obviously, Utah, that's six wins. So we had... Okay, one, two, three. I want to just double check that real fast. Oh yeah, TCU was a ranked win. No, they're no longer ranked, but still. Okay, one in November, one in December. Actually, two in December. That's three. Then TCU, that's four. Five. Six ranked wins in the regular season. But if you want to include the NCAA tournament like a Virginia Tech, and I think it would be fair if you want to include that, which I am, that's seven ranked top 25 wins. Because I'm sure that Virginia Tech is going to, they were, they definitely were in the top 16. I mean, that's the thing. To be a four seed, I would have to think there's no, they have to be no lower than 16. And, but in all this, but we're going to have to wait and see what happens in terms of the transfer portal uh, and Morrison Bartley's decision and the addition, uh, not just transfer portal additions, but subtractions potentially. This is all pending transfer portal. We could potentially bring back up to nine players, maybe even 10 if Mar Madison Bartley does to come back. But even if she does come back, I think we need a post player anyway. That's six foot three or taller. And if she doesn't come back, I'd honestly say get enough two post players or two forwards. So maybe add a guard or two. I don't know. Add another guard. I don't know. Because look at all the experience at guard coming back. Because look, you're going to have Sarah potential. Uh, Sarah and Jana are definitely coming back. That's two seniors and Yaya Felder and Jada Walker. They're assuming they're going to be back. That's four seniors at guard. And Janae Fritz is a guard. That's five. Right there, and if you want to include Bella and Bugs as guards, fine. They're both going to be juniors next year. I'm just telling the truth, and then we obviously we have a freshman coming in, but she's not might not play a lot of minutes. And I know it will be painful to lose Asia Blackwell and Dre Edwards. I know it will be, but I'm sure we could find some good good other players or even better players not to discount them because I appreciate what they have done for this program in terms of leadership and I know it's not the way Asia want, envisioned her time at Baylor in the last two years one the injury and then, then couldn't she was basically in shutdown mode and this year she went to a different role then went down to the five position to defend the five play more inside I mean Andrea Edwards got denied her waiver Last year, and she played this year. She definitely made a difference this year in some of those games. So I expect us to be deep. We're going to be, still be a deep team, potentially. It's a matter of the transfer portal stuff. Both additions and subtractions, but we have to wait and see. I'm not going to dwell on this season too much. It's a good. It was a good year, and we improved, like I said. Overall record, conference record. In and not just conference record, but in terms of conference standings. And we made it to Sweet 16. And I think that's going to help this program. I really do. Not just for high school recruiting or JUCO, but transfer port. Now I think that that burdens off that Nick, Nicky Collins and staff's back. Because now they could say, hey, we went to a Sweet 16 this year. 
or with this roster and we roster constructed this team and there, we're going to want to see what happens so anyways if you like this content hit the like and subscribe button. see you guys later on the road 600 scars close to ultimate goal it's a thousand more some money out this course like in the video comment video really helps youtube algorithm so more people could see it sharing the video does help as well so more people could watch and if you're watching and that subscribe hit subscribe button it's free the notification bell as well